We've already taken a look at Azure's uh, external load balancer and Azure's internal load balancer. In this final video, we're going to take a look at uh, Traffic Manager. Um, just imagine that you've got a web service that you want to make available to your employees or your customers. But these employees, these customers, um, are, are based in two different regions. And what you want to do is make sure the web service is uh, presented to them um, by servers that are closest to them. So that if you're in Northern Europe, you access a service that's based in Northern Europe. Or if in Western Europe, you access a service based in, in Western Europe. Now, Traffic Manager is designed to do this. It acts an e extra level of um, load balancing um, to Azure. Now, to test Traffic Manager, I've got four virtual machines, and you can see them listed here. We've got Web3, Web4, Web5, and Web6. And as you can see, Web3 and Web4 are in one cloud service named MGB CS2, and Web5 and Web6 are in a second cloud service named MGB CS3. Also notice that the locations the uh, Web3 and Web4 are based in Northern Europe, and Web5 and Web6 are based in West Europe. Now, all I've done is configured um, IIS on those machines, and I've changed the default web page to reflect which machine is providing that web page. So the idea is that if you're in Northern Europe, we can have a web service and, and you can access it there. If you're in Western Europe, the same web service, but you'll access some servers in, in Western Europe. Now, what we could do is just give out uh, different URLs to uh, different sets of uh, staff, different members of staff. So we could give out the cloud service URL uh, MGBCS2 for people in Northern Europe and um, the, the, the cloud service URL MGBCS3 in Western Europe. But what if then that, that's a failure? Um, if you're in Northern Europe, I want you to access the Northern Europe web servers, but if they fail, if they're not accessible, I want the Western uh, servers to respond to you. And again, this is what Traffic Manager is all about. Now, as well as having the four servers in two different cloud services in two different locations, for each pair of web servers, I've also configured a load balanced endpoint. So if we take a look at Web3 here, and take a look at endpoints, you'll see that we've got an endpoint there called HTTP that's presented in uh, port 80 and it's part of a load balance set. Web 4 is part of the same load balance set. And I've also configured Web 5, Web 6 in, this, in, in a, their own load balance set as well. So the idea is that if you're in Western Europe, you will connect to uh, one of Web 5 or Web 6, so if you're in Northern Europe, one of Web 3, Web 4. Um, and if it, that, that provides us with the load balancing. Now that's, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the video, if you take a look at our external load balancing video, you'll see how to set up those load balanced endpoints. Well, with these uh, elements in place, we can then use Traffic Manager to guide your um, customers or your members of staff to the most appropriate pair of web servers for them based on their location. So to do this, we need to just scroll down here and under Traffic Manager, we can see we've got uh, already an, a Traffic Manager profile that I've configured, but we'll just show you the, 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 the basic profile configuration. If you go to New, then under Traffic Manager, say Quick Create, and during the initial creation, all we do is select a traffic manager um, DNS prefix that gives us a traffic manager URL. So if I type something in here, like MGB2, and you see that's uh, okay. And the name you choose here has to be uh, globally unique. So all my traffic manager traffic will be um, Pass towards and this this one suffix this um, mgb2 dot traffic manager dot net, and when my traffic is sort of 
it's not actually sent towards that more you type in the URL and the, there's then a traffic manager lookup that's performed and what traffic manager does is based on the uh, DNS prefix and the traffic manager suffix it will use one of the three low bouncing methods to decide how to um, route your traffic so the default is uh, a traffic manager profile with performance set now with performance when your uh, users or your uh, customers make a connection to the URL it will use latency from their location to uh, the traffic manager endpoints to determine where um, their traffic should be passed. Now, latency, it's not exactly latency from their situation, from their uh, position, to be honest. Um, what Microsoft do is can, uh, maintain a list of latency tables, which show latency values for all their different endpoints. So um, when um, we make a, a performance-based traffic manager uh, profile, and a user connects to the traffic manager prefix, it will look, do a lookup on this table and it will guide their traffic to um, the one offering best performance for that moment in time. Now this table is kept updated by Microsoft. It's not exactly real time, but it's pretty quick and it should mean if you use performance-based traffic manager that your users, uh, your members of staff, your customers are guided to the uh, web service that's offering the best performance at that uh, moment in time. Uh, other options are round robin. So with round robin, it will take um, the connections coming in. It will then uh, send first connection to one set of servers, second connection to a second set of servers, third connection to the first set and so on just in like a round robin fashion with failover uh, traffic manager profile if we configure a failover profile it will send all connections to one set of servers um, and if they're not available then send connections to the second set of servers so we choose and this can be changed later on by the way as well so we choose a prefix name that gives our traffic manager url we choose a load bouncing method and we say create now this is uh, uh, at the top there, there's a traffic manager profile called MGB that I've already created. So we'll take a look at that one. Um, and we'll start off with, with configure. So under configure, you can see our DNS name again, mgb.trafficmanager.net. We can see uh, the low bouncing method as well. So this traffic manager set is based on failover, but you can uh, change that if you want. And then we have this, this priority list. Now this list is the cloud services that, we're, that are part of this traffic manager profile that traffic manager is going to be moving traffic towards. And if we uh, scroll up and take a look at endpoints, we can see these two cloud services listed. They're both online, so they're both ready to accept uh, connections. And if I say add here, to say add from the bottom, we can add additional endpoints to the uh, traffic manager uh, profile. So we can, for example, use either cloud services or web apps as well. So you don't need a full cloud service um, to use as a uh, traffic manager endpoint. It could be web apps as long as you're using the correct hosting profile. So it's from here we can see a list of cloud services. We'd select the cloud services then that we want to be part of this traffic manager profile and for me I've got um, MGB CS2 and CS3 they're both online and, and hopefully ready to go so back to configure we can see that using this URL using this URL mgb.trafficmanager.net it's gonna send traffic first of all to MGB CS2 because that's at the top of the fail of the product list um, if those servers are not available then it will use the servers at uh, ngb cs3 now because i've got two servers in each cloud service using load balancing my traffic should be low balanced then between the two and that's one of the cool things with traffic manager you can combine a traffic manager profile with uh, external load balancing you can also through powershell as well create uh, nested traffic manager profiles as well so you can be quite sophisticated uh, with this feature 
Now as I scroll down, we can see the monitoring options here as well. Um, this is going to be used to determine if the um, endpoints are, are online. So we're going to use HTTP port 80 uh, by default here. And this is the same as the probes for your um, external load balancing um, as well. So with this URL in place then, mgb.trafficmanager.net, we should be able to open up a connection to um, my web service. So if I just open up another tab in an explorer, oop, connect to the BBC homepage at the minute, but then do mgb.trafficmanager.net, and you see it's opened up a connection there to, to web four. If we refresh this, and that's still open at web four, so what we'll do is use Chrome and in here we'll connect to the same URL, so mgb .traffic -manager net. That's also connected to Web4. So let's refresh this. What we're trying to do is see if we can get a connection to Web Server 3 as well, just to show you that there is um, Web Server 3 sat behind this as well. There you go. So connection there through a private session in Explorer. So I've got one connection into Web3 and another connection into Web4 as well, Web3 there, Web4. So these two servers are responding to requests. Now, these are the only servers that will respond because of the um, load balancing method we've chosen. So what we'll do now is if I uh, go back to my list of virtual machines. And what we'll do is we'll just shut down Web3 and Web4. So in fact, yeah, I've got a, RDP connections open, so I'll use these to just shut down Web3. I'll close that. And we'll do the same for Web4 as well. I've got an RDP connection up to Web4. So I'll just shut that down. And that'll just take a minute to uh, shut down those services. And then what we'll do, we'll try the same URLs again. And we should find now that because uh, Traffic Manager won't be able to um, locate Web3, Web4, um, or the cloud service that they're in, the cloud service will go offline as well. It should then direct our request to Web5 and Web6. Now, it's going to take just a, a minute just to shut down those machines. Um, so while, while those machines, those VMs are shutting down, we'll uh, pause the video and reset. In fact, let's just give it a second. Sometimes if we do a refresh, you find that things have happened um, already in Azure. So we'll just do a refresh there, retrieving the status of my virtual machines. Oh, there you go, Web3, Web4 has stopped. So um, if we open up a connection again to the same URLs, And that's cached, so we'll do a refresh there. It should make the connection to MGB, uh, sorry, uh, Web5 and Web6. We're trying to make a connection. Um, because Traffic Manager only sends it probe, probes periodically, there might be a little bit of a delay. So what we're going to do is just pause the video, make sure the VMs are stopped, and we'll check back in 30 seconds. So I'll give it a minute just to uh, refresh and clear up caches. If I go back to uh, my Chrome connection now, you can see that I've got a connection to Web5, 
and if we go to Internet Explorer, we've got a connection there into to Web6. And if we refresh these, these are the only two now available on the Spond. Notice we're using the same uh, URL, mgb.trafficmanager.net, to make a connection to these two services. So Traffic Manager has seen that the two um, services, the, the, the original cloud service and its two services are no longer there. So now it guides us towards these two instead. Um, but it did take a little bit of time just to refresh and clear caches. Now it could be a couple of things for that. It could be the local machine cache itself because you're not actually making a connection through the traffic manager service. Um, instead, the DNS servers are resolving um, that that URL you've typed in. Uh, that resolves to the traffic manager service. But then uh, it redirects to the appropriate um, URL, the cloud service. And it could be that the DNS servers you're using have also cached those entries. Now, if we go back to Traffic Manager and look at my Traffic Manager service and configure, there is this uh, a caching option here. So we've got the Traffic Manager name again, but let's see where it says DNS time to live, 300 seconds. That's uh, the five minutes. So that's how long this uh, Traffic Manager name and the associated IP address will be cached in um, in your DNS servers for about five minutes and also locally as well. So it does mean that if there's a change to load balancing method or a change to the endpoints, uh, like endpoints going up, going down, it could take up to 300 seconds before that change is, is reflected uh, on DNS servers. So you might want to adjust that if you've got uh, regular issues or you want faster uh, failover you can adjust that time to live and it'll change the the entry now um, although we've got this URL this mgb.trafficmanager.net uh, URL um, it's probably not the URL you want to use so um, you probably want to use um, custom URLs so one of the things you'll need to do is adjust your DNS service your internet DNS service and we use CNA records for this so we'd have a CNA record that maps to this URL. So if I open up um, uh, another browser and um, I type in uh, traffic test dot mgb leads azure dot com, you see it's, it's resolved to this one of my my web servers. So in uh, my DNS service, and I use a uh, GoDaddy for this, I've adjusted my GoDaddy DNS, uh, DNS entries, and I've added a CNN record called traffic test that redirects to the traffic manager URL. And that's, that's the way we would do it um, for these web services. So traffic manager for me is working, working well, it's doing what it should do, although with a bit of a delay. So in these three videos, we've shown you uh, external load balancing, the internal load balancer and traffic manager. Do feel free to post questions um, on, on this site uh, about these different services. Also feel free to make suggestions for Azure videos that you may want to see in the future. Thank you.